Yeah, well, today I'm at Red Rock in Sutton. It's a kind of breezy day today and uh, kind of dull. I think it's going to rain, but I'm going to have a go anyway. And uh, you can actually see the effects of the wind shaking my easel, but that's not going to stop me. We're at Red Rock, which is a very nice area right on the, the coast at Sutton, the base of the Hill of Hoth. One of my favourite locations to paint. Just keeping things simple, blocking in the shadow areas first. Not staying in one spot for too long. And moving all over the board. It's a fun stage this really because I don't worry about too much about detail. I don't try to uh, worry about every little thing I see. I just a general block in is all I need at this stage. Painting some of the cool shadows. Now the sun has come out, which is I don't know, I don't know whether it's good or bad because it means that the picture can have uh, two effects all at once, which I, I don't really want to get. However, we'll just keep painting. Applying some bright yellows and oranges in the light areas of the foliage. Some warm colours now in the, in the foliage and blocking in the mid-ground with some warm colours too. There's some red there I see as well on the, on the brush, not to worry. Some cool colours, some violet there, and blues in the shadow area. I've already blocked in the sky as we can see, just using some of the cerulean blue and a little touch of uh, alizarin. And that's some more light red and alizarin there in the shadow area of the, the house there on the right hand side. I'm only thinking about large masses of tones at this stage, values that are the opposite, like shadow areas cool, light areas warm. It's hard to think that I won Ireland's best dressed man at one stage. Still keeping things fairly simple. Just looking at all the shadow areas and blocking in the the masses very simply. Not worrying too much about detail as I've said on occasion. Even at this stage we can see the picture developing. Putting in some warm uh, alizarin and light red into the roofs, rooftops of the distant houses along the coast there. A couple of
to fix the colour in the foreground, brighten things up a bit. Putting in the highlights, the light areas for the weather. The light is shining on the front of the houses. Very simply, not worrying about windows or <coughs> any detail at this stage at all. Because I'm short sighted, I, I take my glasses off when I paint. That way, I can't see detail very well. Because you're just bedazzled with so much detail that you sometimes you don't know where to start. So by being short-sighted, it's a it's def a definite advantage. see the sun has gone back in behind the clouds again so it looks like it's going to rain I generally like to work on the clouds uh, first uh, and get them out of the way because uh, they move <laughs> and if you keep on if you leave the clouds till you know till the, the end of the picture the picture might not look the same as, as, what, as what you intended it to be from at the beginning when you when you start to paint because uh, the light obviously changes with the movement of clouds. I have to hold on to the board here because the wind has just come up and uh, it's kind of tricky trying to paint the details with a small brush. Yeah, I can see the rain coming down now. So I'll have to hurry up and get uh, all the details in that I want to get as quick as possible now. The telegraph poles there, lamp posts, and so on. It's kind of tricky sometimes putting in the vertical poles, you have to have a steady hand. So, I, I generally just measure it up first and then just get it in. Don't worry about it, get it in. Just about made it. I think that's about it. 